हेलो मिस्टर रेड्डी हाय वेलकम टू ईगो ग्रीन्स ऑफिशियल न्यूज़ चैनल या और आई सो वेरी ऑस्पिशियस डे फॉर ऑल ऑफ़ अस बिकॉज़ वी आर गिविंग सल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम दैट हैज़ बीन प्रोलॉगिंग एंड सस्पेंडेड फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम राइट सो जस्ट टेल अस अबाउट दिस वेर आर वी व्हाट इज द प्लेस सी वी आर इन बादशाहपुर वेर जोन फोर गुड़गांव ऑल राइट वेर वी हैव बिल्ट अप एन मटेरियल रिकवरी फैसिलिटी ओके इन एरिया ऑफ थर्टी थाउजेंड स्क्वायर फीट ऑल राइट द टोटल प्रोसेसिंग एरिया इन बादशाहपुर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एम आर एफ इज थर्टी थाउजेंड स्क्वायर फीट आई टेल यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज एम आर एफ एम आर एफ इज एन मटेरियल रिकवर फैसिलिटी वेर यू ब्रिंग द वेस्ट विच इज कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम द सोर्स ऑफ डोर टू डोर एंड यू सेग्रीगेट हियर इन टू डिफरेंट फैक्शन रिसाइकलेबल फैक्शन ओके ओके एंड देर इज ए पार्ट ऑफ कंपोस्टिंग ऑल्सो so basically the municipal solid waste is divided into two categories hmm. biodegradable waste and non biodegradable waste okay the biodegradable composting fraction is taken into process for further and compost is manufactured out of it so okay. compost and the remaining uh, material is segregated into fractions okay. like bottles papers glasses fresh materials all right and everything and it will be given to the authorized recycler for the further process basically this is the concept okay. so this is one of the major you know uh, parts of decentralized waste management where the uh, urban waste management is rooting to as on date in the country okay cool generally waste management related issues when it comes to segregation and deep segregation of course this so segregation as source is very important we advise we ask people so how how important is this that the, the resident of the stakeholders they are involved in segregation their role is very important how do you look at that see you know segregation is one of the most important elements you know okay uh, in the day to day waste management mm-hmm. why segregation is important mm. why segregation is important mm. see ultimately whatever waste that is being generated from the households it has to be disposed of at the end of the day so if you ask me personally waste is wealth firm right okay so you collect the waste from door to door and in a mixed form and you will have to invest more of your time money and energy to segregate it for the further process mm. i mean to uh, bring out the output from the material rather exactly if the residents help us to segregate the waste at source mm-hmm. that would be a very you know uh, brilliant thing to do exactly in this uh, modern waste management system exactly so we get the organic fraction separately and the inorganic separately mm. so the organic fraction can directly be transported to the composting facility and you can manufacture a compost out of it all right or uh, biogas whatever you opt so the suitable technology and the recyclables you can once again break into different fractions and you can sell it to the authorized recyclers or you can send it to the authorized recyclers whatever you All right there's a huge sign board I mean there's a board suspended right there outside the the MRF center and it talks about the benefit of these kind of MRS which includes the production of uh, the uh, the generation of yes. revenue the reducing this life cycle of a uh, land uh, landfill also it talks about uh, uh, how it is good for the people those who are downtrodden and underprivileged people they are being uh, they are being uh, hired by you so there are multiple dimensions there are multiple features Okay one of the biggest primary reason why these kind of MRFs are important as they believe in the world is basically we are reducing the height of yes. the landfill right so yes. it's going to be very very see, eco friendly see you know uh, the m- two most important elements mm. in the landfill is air and water okay okay so to secure the quality of air right and to you know uh, eradicate penetration of leachate into the ground okay so which causes by open dumping right so if you adopt this type of technologies in a decentralized manner mm-hmm. and if you treat the waste as per norms like this was this right, facility right. is set up right. with which we can you know uh, bring down the load that is going onto the landfills cool. where you can save the ground water right, where you right. can save the uh, uh, you know lot of uh, uh, poly- uh, pollution causing elements penetrating right. into the air and all cool we'll go and uh, we'll go inside now yes and uh, for people like us it's important to understand how do we manage this yeah. right so we'll take a small tour with you and we'll understand the process sure at the end of the video then we'll try to figure out basically what is the future plan related to sure. these kind of projects right we'll go yeah. inside
All right. So, Mr. Reddy, we are trying to understand how this process is uh, yeah. being executed, right? Okay. Yeah. Tell, please tell us. See, uh, whatever waste that is collected from door to door, uh -huh. so the vans which collect the waste from door to door, uh -huh. they'll be uh, taken inside this uh, premises. Okay. And uh, you know there is a 30 ton capacity weigh bridge which is already installed here. Okay. And the first the vehicle comes onto the weigh bridge, uh -huh. so the one the weight is recorded, uh -huh. and you can see either side. Uh, it, the signboards are marked. This is segregation okay. area. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Uh, this once it is recorded, it is it digitally recorded or? It is digitally recorded. Digitally recorded. Yes. Once and then the vehicle will move. You from can here. see there is an uh, wave bridge operator cabin is also. Okay. You know, uh -huh. set up. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there will be an uh, system set up inside the cabin, All right. and an operator will be sitting inside there, uh -huh. and he will be recording the weight of the vehicles uh, digitally. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once the weight is recorded, and you can see on the either side the segregation area, it is already marked, and the bays are marked. If you can see bay one, bay two, bay right, three. Right. Right. We'll so, try to understand that as well. Are they designated spots for individual vehicles or area wise? See, it is. See, you can uh, once again. Uh, you know, you, you just have an insight onto the board. Okay. One example, the helper name, right. area. Uh -huh. So, from wherever the waste is coming, okay. it is categorized area wise uh -huh. and it is separated trip wise. Okay. And the person who segregates the waste in this particular bay uh -huh. and his name is also Mentioned notified there. on the board. Right. Okay. So, the, the driver knows where to come and where to yes. unload it, right? Yes. Once the unloading is done, most of the waste, as we understand, is now segregated at source. In yes. case there is a mixed waste, then they, they do deep segregation here? Yes. Okay. So, they, how many people we have involved approximately, those who are involved in deep segregation here? See, uh, there are almost, you know, uh, you see, 20 to 25 odd people are involved in the segregation okay. in this particular area. All right. And besides this, there are other people. Yes. Right. So, we have, must be having around 100 people as a human yeah. are involved in this. Yes. Once the segregation is done, what exactly we do? See, once the segregation is done, uh -huh. so the uh, material fractions, right. which which are segregated from the uh, waste, right. will be taken into the base constructed. You know, okay. uh, just a head above. You mean the wet waste? Yes. The food waste. Yes. Okay. The food. And there is a separate area uh -huh. which is specially designated for the inert post process inert. Okay. So, once you process the waste, uh -huh. so you will get certain amount of inert, uh -huh. post-processing inert. Uh -huh. That inert will be stored here okay. and later it is uh -huh. transferred to the landfill site. Alright, so we are getting to understand this now. Once the waste is collected and, and then we segregate it into plastic yeah. recyclable, food waste and mixed waste. Yeah. Recyclable goes to the recyclable vendors. Yes. Food waste goes to the Gaushala also, it is written outside because yes. food is required for, for, as a fodder also is required for animals. Those who demand it here. Yes. So, we are sending food there as well. Yes. Right? Okay. And the rest of the green waste, then food waste? Will be uh, taken for composting. Okay. Shall we, will, will yes. you go and check out? Yes. Okay. Yes. And this section, Mr. Reddy? Yeah, this section is uh, a composting area. Okay. So. Uh, after the preliminary segregation of the uh -huh. uh, pure organic waste, okay. whatever food waste that uh, uh, as per the demand we send to the cow shelters and all. Okay. And the remaining mixed organic fraction is bought here. Uh -huh. And you know, there are 35 mits, 35 pits have already been, you know, Installed constructed here. here. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So the size, uh, I mean, the volume of the pit is 9.2 cubic meter. Uh -huh. That is somewhere around, uh, based on the bulk density of the waste, somewhere around 4 to 5 tons of. Uh, you know, waste you can uh, put inside this pit and you can uh, add some biological inoculum for the fermentation process. Okay. So that the uh, pure organic fraction waste will turn into composting. All right. So number okay. of days uh, uh, divided for each pit, I mean, there's one pit designated to one day. Right? Yes. So keep on ro rolling, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so basically, it is planned in such a way hmm. that one month rolling, mm -hmm. the total waste is, uh, you know, uh, fermented okay. and turns into purely compost. All oh, right. And then we can uh, use it in the, uh, you know, uh, areas where we. Okay. Can and use the final it. product is not not talking about the residues. I'm talking about the final product. Compost one it is once it is ready. Do we have a plans to actually sell it or give it for free for farmers or for people those who are into horticulture departments? See, uh, we are we are into you know uh, uh, discussion on that because okay. so based on the output of the product 
and okay. based on the guidelines of uh, FCO, you know, fertilizer control order. All right. So, uh, we were able to meet all the parameters of FCO. Okay. And uh, we are in discussion with few uh, fertilizer companies to market the product basically. And, uh, and, and, and we, we can even uh, send the packed baggages to local farmers, those who are available in and around the uh, city All right. for use of this compost. Because as this is purely a biodegradable uh, process, uh -huh. there is no chemicals and there is no, uh, no other catalysts or substances used to produce okay. the compost here. Uh -huh. but, only the, uh, but we follow only the pure the biodegradable process. All right, done. Yeah. So recyclable first second is the green waste the food waste now whatever little inert is left we are left with we'll go and check out what do we do with that yes okay, okay. yes and this is the you know the area where the inert is right yes please, can you please tell us what is it see uh, this is the area which is uh, specially designated to store the inert uh -huh. post process inert uh, you know uh, i would like to specify one thing here very particularly is okay uh, these type of mrs mrfs and the process what we have adopted here okay so there will be any hardly inert that is uh, you know uh, left out to be right. uh, taken care of hmm. so we are segregating here in almost three stages mm -hmm. so once in this waste reception platform and there is a deep segregation area mm -hmm. further and then composting okay. so there will be hardly inert uh, left to be disposed all right but little amount of inert whatever we get that mm -hmm. will be stored here and later it will be disposed of to the uh, landfill landfill all right yes. there also i mean of course inert is being treated uh, in the yeah. scientific manner Yes. All right, there are some basic technical questions about it. We'll ask that. Yeah. All right, so time to wrap up. Before yeah. we sign out, again, we have to conclude with some data. Like how much, uh, this is for the zone 4. Yes. Okay. How many ho households we must be covering approximately? See, households, uh, uh, we would be covering somewhere around uh, 50 or to 60 or 1000. 1000, all right. Uh, households. Okay. And uh, we would be getting around 100 metric tons of uh, waste. waste from the households okay. to this particular MRF. And uh, apart from the waste that is being uh, taken away, uh, that is being treated at the bulk, bulk waste generators level and all. Mm -hmm. So whatever waste that we expect here to be uh, processed in this MRF is 100 metric tons per day. All right, done. So we are expecting almost zero in to the landfill. And yeah. uh, so approximately 40, 50 people are involved, engaged in this. They are employed yeah. by us, right? Or yes. Okay. Blood so this works in their welfare yeah. as well. Fantastic. Do we have a plan to extend these kind of activities in our zo other zones as well? Yes. Uh, actually, you know, decentralized waste management nowadays, you know, reducing mm. the load on the landfill. Okay. So uh, this is one of the prime concepts that even uh, Government of India is also supporting in the okay. uh, various municipal uh, corporation limits and all. So this is our first MRF. So we would like to see how it goes. This is uh, a trial and error. I mean, a trial and error is done. Has it been successful in other states and districts, yes. other part of the world. Yeah, yeah. See, Indore is having its own uh, MRF of okay. uh, optic sensor technology, all and right. a few other cities down south they are having their own technologies with MRFs okay. and all. So, this is one what we thought would be uh, apt as per the uh, waste that is being received from this area. From Kogram and as uh, well. we, we will be continuously working on process improvement, and we will be continuously working on uh, bringing new concepts. Uh, of MRFs to uh, cater the waste that is being collected from the households. Okay. For our Hindi viewers, we will repeat this thing. It is an MRF which is in Bashiapur. There will be about 50,000 people here. It will be segregated most of the time because the green always focuses on the segregation. Recyclable waste, which is 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 recyclable waste, जो डिमांड है इस पर दी दिस प्लेस गुरुग्राम के इस जोन के जितने भी काउ शेल्टर होम्स हैं यहाँ पे गायों को रखा जाता है जानवरों को दिया जाएगा बाकी बचे हुए खाने से हम कंपोस्ट बनाएंगे और थोड़ा बहुत इनर्ट मतलब उसके बावजूद जो बचता है उसको लैंडफिल में भेजा जाएगा जहाँ पर उसको ट्रीट करके साइंटिफिकली डिस्पोज ऑफ किया जाएगा ठीक है दिस इज़ अ स्मॉल प्रोसेस ये हमने हिंदी में बता दिया हमारे हिंदी व्यूअर्स के लिए इसके फ़ायदे हम क्विकली बता दें कि एक तो लैंडफिल का साइज़ जो है वो बढ़ेगा नहीं उल्टा कम हो जाएगा एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्वामेंट के लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है पर्यावरण के लिए बड़ा अच्छा होगा सर एक चीज़ और है बड़ी अच्छी इसमें कि जो गाड़ियाँ यहाँ से इस वेस्ट को लैंडफिल तक लेके जाती थी वहाँ पे फ्यूल कंजम्पशन होता था उनका अब उनको इतना ट्रैवल करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है वो गाड़ियाँ अब यहीं पर आएँगी तो देश का पोल्यूशन कम होगा शहर का पोल्यूशन कम होगा गाड़ियों की मेनटेनेंस कम होगी लोगों को रोज़गार पैदा होता है इससे और इस एरिया के आसपास के रहने वाले लोगों को क्योंकि ये एरिया जो है अगर आप देखें पहले तो बहुत ख़राब हालत में था आज ये बहुत अच्छी हालत में है 
तो आसपास के के लोगों को भी इससे बहुत बड़ा रिलीफ मिलेगा करेक्ट यस yes. ठीक है सो so, बहुत सारे इसके फायदे हैं जो हमने कुछ अभी बता दिए थैंक्स लॉट फॉर शेयरिंग दिस वंडरफुल इन्फॉर्मेशन विद अस एंड वी होप दिस आई एम श्योर दिस विल वर्क वेरी वेल नॉट होप वी आर श्योर दिस विल वर्क वेरी वेल वी होप टू सी दिस काइंड ऑफ एम आर एफ बींगेवलपेटली थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू वेरी मच